It's the Andy Thompson Show on ESPN 97.7. It's the Andy Thompson Show. Thanks for being with us. Thanks to Coach Alopapo for making time for us. Uh, we're going to try to have him on every Tuesday. Every other coach will have a designated day to talk uh, high school football. And now one of my favorite uh, guests uh, every year is the director of officials down here, Gene Van Orden, our guy. How's it going, Gene? Hey, it's great, man. Thanks for inviting me. I really appreciate it. Excited for another season of high school football. Where are you going to be on Friday? Because it's going to be 100,000 degrees down here where I'm going to be. You know, I hate to let parents know where I'm going, but we're going where it's cooler. I'll just tell cooler. you that. I get to pick, and this week I'm picking cooler. Uh, good for you, so, man. I wish I had that power. Yeah, we're going to go play golf and then do a game, so it'll be fun. But uh, we have uh, eight games in the southern Utah area, and uh, we're pretty much every weekend, we're, we're between seven and nine games down here. Between wow. We cover from Beaver South, so yeah. one, we cover... 1A, 2A, and now with Water Canyon, we even have some eight-man football that we do. Oh, wow. Yeah, so Water Canyon started two years ago. They actually uh, have a turf field. It's beautiful, nice facility, and uh, they run eight-man football and actually got to the uh, quarterfinals last year. How do you enjoy that? that? It's very different. You, uh, it's The field is not as wide. It's about 15 yards shallower uh-huh. as far as that which is good because with eight men if you had a hundred yard field it would run you sure couldn't stop and they get to the corner it's over yeah. so it's a little bit different field but uh it's great for the kids out there to be able to play and to be you know make schools that have that number of students the availability to be part of it so it's great uh, the first question that everybody wants to know when we were approaching a new high school football year from Eugene, I'm sure, is what what if any changes are happening rules wise going into this season? You know, the only major rule change this year was in the jerseys, which don't honestly don't really affect us because if they do it right, they do. If not, we just report them to the state and the state deals with it. But the jerseys have to be a solid uh, color. That the numbers where they used to have the light gray with the dark gray shirt. Mm. Oh, and this is great! Right for, this, this is, is the greatest massive. thing ever. The numbers have to be completely contrasting. This they is cannot, a revolution. They, yeah. Oh, no, seriously. <laughs> I, 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 it helps us too. Yeah. I mean, it's a big plus when you're trying to pick a number when you throw a flag. So, uh, it the numbers, the jerseys, the home team has to wear dark. They all have to have all the same dark jerseys on, believe it or not. That was not a rule. <laughs> it was assumed, but it yeah. was actually not a rule. Oh, that, so funny. you could have wore dark blue and dark gray, and as long as you all had dark, it could have been good. But now it has to be the same color, and the numbers have to be completely contrasting. Uh, the solid numbers, they have to be in block, or you know they can be somewhat script, but they oh. have to be... Where basically it's going to help you guys when you call that it. is fantastic. I think a lot. So right, Burns. And then the visiting team that. has to be in white unless otherwise agreed upon, and that has to go through the state. Like if they want to wear a light gray or something like that, that's got to be approved by the state. Okay, well that's a that's a fantastic start because uh, me and Rustin are up there. We don't know there there were certain uniforms last year where you Andy read brings them. his binoculars and they were yeah. no help. To, oh, right, I, like, I, like white looking white down there, and he still can't make out what, what's yeah. on the number. Yeah. I was up at Cedar City last year in the playoffs, and there's some teams that you honestly, with the unless the sun was perfect, you could not read the letters. Yeah, yeah. So. I blame Oregon by the way for all that for that trend. Right, yeah. they yeah. try to get cute. 47 uniforms, no national championships. That's great. <laughs> That's good. I like that. We're rooting against them, too, because they <laughs> abandoned us in the Pac-12. So good luck in the Big Ten. Uh, talking with Gene Van Orden here, who's the director of officials uh, heading into, it does all sports, but heading into football season now. Um, 
Let's talk about the officials in general. How's the uh, the numbers of officials? Do you need more? And We always need more. If anyone is interested, we have a website. You can certainly go to our local website at redrockofficials.com. has my phone number. You can call me. You can get a hold of us. It's not too late. Uh, we had our first meeting a week ago. Our next meeting is on the, I wrote it on my list here, so I wouldn't mess it up on the 19th. And uh, basically, you have to get a, a registered with UHSSA and then registered with us. We'll get you signed up, get your uniform set up. And then basically, our underclass games start next week. This week is all, uh, uh, you know, the first week games that yeah. they set up. Yeah. And then after that, we go underclass starting next Thursday. And then regular season basically goes on from there. I'm wondering, Gene, if you'll take us into a little bit behind the scenes to like a meeting, what are some of the things that you focus on with your guys and your officials, either going into a season or just in general that you really, you know, emphasize with your guys? You know, one of the things that I, that is kind of been my motto, credo, whatever you call it, you ask anyone who's been to any of my meetings, the last thing I say to my guys is be the calm in the storm. Once you become part of the storm, Mm. it's over. Mm-hmm. And you guys know that when playing, you know, if once you lose your cool, once you sure. get out of your own head, it's downhill from there. And it's happened to all of us. I have lost my crap on a football field before. <laughs> There's been no doubt about sure. that. I certainly am mellower now than I was. <laughs> and that's, but it's hard for young guys to keep their heads and be that part of it in the process. You know, we are not out there to be somebody's buddy, somebody's friend. We are not on the home team. We are not with the visiting sure. team. We we are not part of that. Yeah. Our job is to make the game fair and legal. And if we do things by rule, and that's what I tell my guys, if you always go by rule, it's pretty hard to argue with you. Now, there are judgments, and I agree with you. Some people like what we call, some people don't on judgment calls, but it still is what it is. And if you do it by rule, even judgment calls, we have certain criteria on a hold. What do we expect a guy to do for a hold? We expect him to alter the person's path or to pull and, you know, pull them. Yeah. We don't just think because guys are a hold of each other, that is not a hold. The guy has to try to get away. Because that would be a flag every play. Oh, you, you, you literally, it would be a five-hour game. Yeah. It's just wouldn't be fun yeah. for any of us. Yeah. So. Um, you, you bring up a good point there, too, though, with the whole keeping your cool mindset, because ultimately we often look at the athletes as those who are responsible for keeping their cool. Right. You know, right. take deep breaths so you can hit this free throw or, you right. know, so you can make the right, right decision. But it's, it's just as essential, if not more so for, for the officiating crew to do so. And this is classic water cooler talk all the time. Right. When people are sitting there and they're like, man, how tough would it be to be an umpire? Right. Or to officiate a basketball game, even at the high school level, when the crowd's so close and on top of you. But a lot of times you don't take into account all the players around you and how close and personal you are with the coaches and the players on the gridiron. I mean, for you, just take us behind the scenes kind of of, of what it's like and how how intense and passionate things can get and, and rather quickly, right? Football is a physical, passionate game where people it's a train wreck on every play if you think it's not it gets worse and worse at each level i don't know if you've ever been on the sideline at a d1 game or a professional game but i don't know how those guys get up on monday Mm -hmm. i'm seriously yeah i don't know how those running backs it looks like they just get tackled they don't get tackled right they literally it's like running into a brick wall when those guys get hit and and i can tell you the athleticism that happens at the high school level now is what used to happen at the college level and college yeah. level is like what the pros was 10 years ago and the athletes are just so much stronger they're so much faster i mean you were talking to coach wayne yeah. just a minute ago i can tell you if you talk to him his off-season stuff is every bit as important to him for his weightlifting getting the kids ready getting the kids in shape oh yeah sure. that goes on all year now kids yeah. don't just pick up a football and play three weeks before these kids are playing seven on seven these kids are working out three times four times a week getting ready for this 10 weeks it's a big deal and that's why we want our guys to not make rash decisions that will cost a kid 
to not get to play. I don't want to throw a kid out of the game. I want to talk a kid out of being stupid. I want to talk him out of making that last comment to cause him or throw a punch or do something that he has 10 weeks. If he gets thrown out of a game, he loses this game and whatever he is left for, to make uh-huh. it a full game. Uh-huh. If he does something stupid at the end of the fourth quarter, he loses all next week, and now he has eight games instead of ten. You know, you see what I'm well, saying? Absolutely. So it's brutal. And, it, and it's something that I've appreciated as a spectator watching refs if for Region 9 games after a play, going up and putting their arm around the waist of the quarterback and talking to him for a second. Absolutely. You know, coaching him up, like, hey, you know, warning him or whatever, but kind of helping him out so he doesn't do something that might... You know, I've I've walked up to quarterbacks on a legal hit after they have just literally been trained. And you walk up and I help them up and I go, you okay? You know, look at yeah. me, you okay? Yeah. And they'll look at me, no, you know, that really hurt. Yeah. And they will tell you that <laughs> smiling. And then they jog back because they're athletes and they're warriors and they want to be part of it. But I can tell you, it is a physical game. Our job is to make it a fair physical game. We And, and what they've done is taken the above the shoulders out of the game and they're trying to take below the waist out of the game which is good because where they where do kids get hurt concussions and knees yeah. let's be realistic yeah. that's that's the problem not the problem but that's the game we used to get stickers on our helmet for stuff that kids get thrown out right. of games for now right yeah absolutely. i mean seriously when i played yeah. it was you know you'd get a sticker at the team meeting for lighting some kid up 40 yards from the play. Right. Not the case. Yeah. Not the case. If the kid you hit ended up trying to walk to the wrong sideline, that was a big deal. Oh, yeah. They'd you give you two stickers. Buckeyes all probably, over your helmet. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Talking with uh, Gene Van Orden, director of uh, officials here in southern Utah. Region 9 starts playing uh, this Friday. Other than uh, the, the um, no real big rule changes this year, Gene, is there anything I guess you guys are really trying to focus on this year? Uh, they have. In fact, like we had a, a Zoom meeting with the High School Activities Association on uh, Monday. He had his meeting with all of the coaches that was required today. And they talked about the rules and the emphasis. The emphasis this year is definitely on uh The two main things are on equipment being worn properly, meaning Mm -hmm. knee pads, pants covering their knees, things like that. You've seen more kids basically are wearing short pants. That is over with. They cannot do that. They have to have knee pads. It's got to be properly worn. They're going to reemphasize the guest again with us today. They had the meeting with the coaches. After they met with the coaches, I'm sure he will come back with us referees and say, okay, now how do we want to implement this? Where do we want to draw the line? Where do we want? Because basically the rule says if he doesn't have pants that cover his full knee, he can't play. Huh. Now, I don't know where they're going to draw that line. That's that was a lot. Seen. That was a lot. Oh, of it kids was ridiculous. It was yeah. it was eighty percent of the kids. Yeah, let's be realistic. Yeah, uh, every white out in the state. Yeah. thought his knees, his pants should be above his knees. And and, and uh, I never understood running backs running through yeah. the box with no leg, like, almost nothing. no leg pads. No knee pads right? There weren't no. bike they, shorts. They had nothing. Yeah, literally <laughs> it's crazy. The other thing is formations. They want us to make the formations legal. If you've noticed in the past, the linemen have started getting further and further back. And and part of that is our fault. Part of that is the rule and us uh, basically implementing the rule. The rule is the linemen have to break the plane, whether they're standing or on the ground, their hand has to be breaking the waist of the center or their feet have to be breaking the the waist of the center if they're in the you know basically most tackles now very seldom put their hand on the ground and so they have to break that plane if they don't break that plane it's an illegal formation and they want us to call that this year they want us to move the kids up so you're either on the line of scrimmage or you're off the line they don't want people in that no man's land where they have been the last couple of years i mean it's pretty if you go watch film which i watch a lot of high school film obviously uh, you see that, and it's progressively gotten worse. And, and I'll be honest with you, I think we have to take part of the problem for that was, A, it wasn't pushed to us to say you got to call it. Mm-hmm. And so coaches are going to take advantage, and it is an advantage to have your guys a yard back. They can pull, they can do things, or pass blocking to have that extra yard to yeah. set up. And so they want us to have them on the line. So that's a huge point of emphasis this year is to make sure the formations are legal on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and that's permeated all levels of football 
uh, I remember that. I mean, the Chiefs last, they're always hammered for that. Like their right. their left tackle is like next to Mahomes. Yeah, he's basically. literally <laughs> beyond. He's past the guy that's not on the line on yes. the outside. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah back exactly. So far, yeah, amazing. Uh, talking with Gene Van Orden, one of our favorite interviews of the year. Getting ready for football season. Anything I missed, Gene, about the upcoming year that people should know about uh, the officials and what you guys are are doing this year? You know, we just. Are- uh, appreciate you guys supporting us and I, I've listened to your broadcast and you guys are very supportive in what we do and you're not judgmental and and that's important to us that you guys support us and and you guys always have in the past you know you guys are are very real I, I don't care if you give us your opinion that's I, I think that's great but I have never heard one time where you guys have said hey that's just terrible or that's right. you know you say hey that's a call maybe that's a tough call who knows but yeah and and that's good for us because I can tell you that people hear that and they listen to that and perception is reality. And I, we try very hard as officials to just be fair and do it right and be consistent. That's what we're trying to teach our guys. I want this guy at this game to call hold the same way we're calling yeah. hold at the other game. I want us to call uh, the formations the way the way we've called it. We we want our guys, we're working very hard to follow the manual and to follow the mechanics book so that if I go work a game up north, the guys that I work with up north are doing the same thing yeah. we're doing down here. That has not been the case in, well, I can't see in the last couple of years because we've, we've, I work quite a few games up north and, and I can tell you we work really hard Hard so that we're all on the same page, which is a plus. I sure. Think a big plus. Absolutely. Well, I always say in football, the offensive linemen are the most important people on the field because they get no glory. They do the hardest job. Um, without them, we couldn't play the sport. And they're willing to do this noble job of, of playing this hardest position with no glory. Right with them is, is referees. That is a hard job. It's one that you don't get a lot of glory for. You only really get noticed if somebody's yelling at you because they think you made a mistake. So, but without referees, we couldn't be playing these games. Would get everybody so excited. So it's a it's an honorable uh, job, and I know you don't get paid much to do it, and the guys you bring in don't, but they do it because of the love of the game and the love of the community and the kids. And I think there's that's a there's a lot to that. You know, the kid the kids are great. Coaches are great here. We have we have coaching staffs that know what they're doing. They yeah. are excellent coaches. They coach it the right way. Uh, they have opinions, and that's fine, and and I think they should. Yeah. I, if they didn't have passion, I don't think they should be doing it. So I'm I'm fine with a coach being passionate and also having the backs of their kids. Sometimes they just have to support their kids, even if they know their kid was wrong. They're going to support their kids. Sure. We get that, and that's why we talk to them and try to try to be a the calm in the storm and not escalate things to where it becomes more of a problem. Uh, it is a you know, what I try to tell our guys is when you get to the game, you got your five guys that you've got to support and have their backs. They've got their coaching staffs on both sides of the field that do the same thing for them. And if every one of those three groups basically are going to do what they have to do, they want to get the best advantage they can on yep. both sides of the ball. Our job is to make it fair on both sides of the ball. Gene Van Orden, everybody, the director of officials down here in southern Utah. Gene, it's always great to see you. Always. Thanks for coming. You guys have a good year. I look forward to seeing you at the game. Absolutely. We'll see you on Friday nights uh, coming up here shortly. Quick break. uh, Back.